Drag queens and transsexuals are using cartoons to indoctrinate and sexualize our children. Drag queen groomers and the trans agenda are evil. Capitalism's relentless exploitation is driving the Earth's sixth mass extinction. Capitalism is the one true intersection of evil. Malvado. Buza. Malum. Whatever the tongue, evil is my love language. Tonight we dive into the depths of the diabolical to discover who is the most evil. And I know what you're thinking. Evil? Like in the Bible? With God, Jesus, and that eminently fuckable devil? I don't believe in all that. You're too smart to believe in a devil. Evil is not just a religious right code word for something I hate. Evil is not contained within religion. Evil is everywhere. Our culture is saturated with it. And I shall be your guide from this cursed place. The internet. For you see, I am evil made flesh. God damn it. I am evil made flesh. And I want to share myself with you. Teach you to see me everywhere. To recognize evil, we must define evil. So we start tonight's double feature with what some say is the purest evil of all. A woke, communist, pro-trans professor of philosophy. And then, my dear friend, armed with heightened senses and razor-sharp definitions, we'll have a little debate over who is the most evil. And then you'll see. You'll see the masters of malevolence, the queens of corruption, the kings of cruelty, the orchestrators of oppression, and the ultimate agent of evil. Shall we begin? So evil is a little clickbaity, right? The word evil has this satanic connotation, but our discussion is completely separate from the religious good and evil. Like the Bible says it's a sin to wear clothes made of two fabrics, but it's okay to beat your slaves if you don't beat them too hard. Maybe not the best guide about right and wrong. But we don't use the word evil in a biblical context anyway, right? If we're feeling hyperbolic, we judge all kinds of things as evil. Groomers, boomers, and zoomers. Evil is a value judgment, the worst we can bestow. But evil doesn't just mean the worst. You're the worst. You're the worst. I'm the worst. You're the worst. Ugh, you're the worst. You are the worst! Oh. Are you still the worst? Yeah. So edible. You're the worst. Evil means something sharper, malignant. I'll define evil as shocking, objective, immorality. But this begs the question, is there an objective morality? Can anyone even know what is objectively right or wrong? <laughs> yeah, I do. Not because I'm like so smart and moral. I'm a dumb dumb slut. But I used to be a professor of ethics, the academic study of right and wrong. So it's not me who knows what's good or evil, it's these titans of philosophy, some of the most influential minds in history. I'm just the messenger. If you want to learn about evil, you ask moral philosophers. You don't ask religious fanatics pushing a puritanical worldview of a transphobic, misogynist, patriarchal, jealous god who hates fags. Ooh, spicy. Ethics is actually very easy to understand. The three main archetypal categories of ethical theory encompass the majority of opinions about morality. The consequentialist, utilitarians, the deontological, categorical imperative, and hey, wake up. You don't want a university lecture. Let's consider this topic from a more populist lens. Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, the three main heroes of the Marvel Cinematic Universe are solid representations of the three main ethical theories. These heroes fight the same battles against the same villains, but they still have conflict. 
They disagree about how to achieve the best outcomes. The three ethical theories are the same. They agree on almost everything. Don't steal, don't murder, don't wait until you're at the counter to decide your fucking order. And if the main theories all agree, despite having very different lines of reasoning, this suggests morality is objective, or at least something we can all agree on. The theories are utilitarianism, deontology, and virtue ethics. Like Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, and Thor Odinson, their moral compasses arise from different philosophies. Shut up, bird. And maybe you're thinking, why the fuck would I care if I'm a utensil, diplodologist, or ventriloquist? Which is a fair question. The purpose of this video is to help you understand objective morality, to explain these three theories in simple terms so that you can better discern right from wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, politics is filled with bad faith politicians who legislate actions that harm others for personal gain. Politicians who are shockingly, objectively immoral. This video is not about changing your beliefs. I want you to understand your beliefs better. If you understand why something is moral, you can better recognize the immorality of modern politics. You can make more informed decisions. You can understand who acts with the most malice, the greatest disregard for suffering. You can see who is the most evil. So let's talk philosophy. Utilitarianism was started by two dudes nobody has heard of named Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. But there is a utilitarian philosopher you have heard of. Revolutionary communist, friend of the show, and pansexual deviant, Chad Marx. So like, utilitarianism wants to maximize the good vibes across society. The greatest amount of good for the greatest number of people. This is a consequentialist theory, which means the consequences of an action determine its moral worth. This is a fancy philosophical way of saying the ends justify the means. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Tony Stark is the voice of utilitarianism. Iron Man is often willing to make moral sacrifices for the greater good. We see this best in Avengers Age of Ultron. Tony Stark is worried about future global threats, and he secretly works on artificial intelligence to protect the greater good. But he's like totally sus. After the Avengers retrieve the mystical glow stick of destiny, Tony lies to his team. Banner and I will give it the once over before it goes back to Asgard. Is that cool with you? And ultimately uses the scepter to create a true artificial intelligence. So you're going for artificial intelligence and you don't want to tell the team. Tony does this because he knows they'll push back. He adopts the mantle of mad scientist. <laughs> breaking rules. You think this is funny? Because he believes it is for the greater good. It's a hoot that you don't get why we need this. Tony. And then, of course, Ultron becomes an unstoppable supervillain murder bot and not the hero Tony hoped. I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. Sometimes it just be like that. Ultron can't tell the difference between saving the world and destroying it. Where do you think he gets that? So Tony, always the smartest person in the room, doubles down. Halfway through the film, he does it all again. I'm caught in a time loop. This is exactly where it all went I know. wrong. I know. The lies. I know what everyone's gonna say, but they're already saying it. The secret experimentation. We're mad scientists. And births vision a second AI. The consequences of his first attempt were so bad, Tony is compelled to try again for better consequences. He succeeds the second time around and creates a true hero, powerful, moral, and worthy. We need to go. Unsurprisingly, this hero that Tony creates turns out to be utilitarian. Well done. But more on that later. Tony believes the ends Peace in our time. justify the means. I've created a murder bot. So he's willing to break the rules and make morally questionable decisions. You want me to help you put Jarvis into this thing? No, of course not. I want to help you put Jarvis in this thing. Because he's hyper focused on the consequences, ultimately saving as many lives as possible. 
That's utilitarianism. This is like a pretty superficial explanation because the best way to understand utilitarianism is by comparing it to its philosophical opposite, deontology. Let's watch a short video to learn more. For all actions, there are consequences. For all means, there are ends. The utilitarian focuses on consequences and says the ends justify the means. It's okay to break the rules if it's for the greater good. Deontology is the inverse. The consequences don't matter. Moral actions are moral regardless of their success. Good, well-intentioned actions justify bad consequences. The means justify the ends. There's a Marvel movie centered on the conflict between these two philosophies. Captain America Civil War. Tony Stark is racked with utilitarian guilt about the unintended consequences of all their world saving, especially Ultron. Tony knows that they meant well, but the ends, in their case, have not justified their means. Oh, that's Charles Spencer, by the way. So Tony pressures the Avengers to sign the Sokovian Accords. We dropped a building on them while we were kicking ass. A document which surrenders their autonomy to a governing body. Tony doesn't think it's right. We need to be put in check. But he believes it serves the greater good. I'm doing what has to be done to stave off something worse. Captain America, on the other hand, is a deontologist. He believes the negative consequences of their world saving don't matter. The Avengers were formed to make the world a safer place. I feel we've done that. Because he knows their intentions were heroic. He refuses to sign. The safest hands are still our own. And this tears the Avengers apart. Even though a civil war hurts the greater good, Captain America is resolute, uncompromising in his moral belief. Even if everyone is telling you that something wrong is something right, even if the whole world is telling you to move, it is your duty to plant yourself like a tree Look them in the eye and say, no, you move. Steve will always choose the moral action, even if it has harmful consequences, even if it makes him a criminal. The means always justify the ends. Deontology was founded by Immanuel Kant, who wrote, Usefulness or fruitlessness of a moral act can neither add nor subtract from its worth. Imagine a friend gives you a very thoughtful gift that you already owned. What do you say? There is no beneficial consequence from your action. It is a completely useless gift. You're a bad gift giver. No. We say it's the thought that counts. This is deontology's tagline. The intention of goodwill behind the gift is touching, even if it has no beneficial consequence. So if deontology is focused on good actions, what makes an action good? It has to follow a moral rule, some kind of golden rule. Like, treat others the way you want to be treated. The golden rule is okay, but it isn't great. It covers most of the ethical basics. I don't want to be killed, so I shouldn't kill. I want people to be kind to me, so I should be kind to other people. But this isn't good enough for daddy. Kant, what if you think, I want to be grabbed by the neck, slapped in the face, and called a dirty, dirty slut when we're having sex. And so every time you have sex with someone new, you grab them by the throat, slap them in the face, and call them a dirty, dirty slut. The golden rule says so. You're just treating others the way you want to be treated. The golden rule doesn't work because it's not empathetic. It frames the whole moral calculation internally, based on your preference and prejudice, as if your experience was universal. Okay, it's raining, so I hope it doesn't, it's not too loud, I've got like umbrellas. Here's a picture of the setup that I've got going on. <laughs> the golden rule doesn't work because it's not empathetic. And this is my favorite part about deontology. Kant came up with the perfect rule. He called it the categorical imperative. You should always act as if the maxim of your action were to become universal law. In other words, an action is good if the intention, the essence of that action, is something everybody in the world had to do. Should I murder? What if everybody murdered? No, thank you. Should I be kind? What if everybody was kind? Oh, that would be lovely. This nuance answers the harder questions. Should I slap people in the face during sex? 
What if everybody slapped their lover in the face during sex? Ah, that's not the right question. We need the maxim, the intention behind rough sex. I like rough sex. It fulfills a consensual shared fantasy. Should we honor consensual shared fantasies? What if everybody honored consensual shared fantasies? Oh, wouldn't that be something? Should we encourage people to pursue whatever form of consensual love they desire, straight or queer? What if everybody encouraged people to pursue whatever form of consensual love they desired, straight or queer? Incredible, no? Daddy Kant was one smart motherfucker. Sure, he was a little racist and definitely speciesist, but who isn't? To sum up, deontology says it's not the consequence of an action that matters, it's the intention behind the action, which ought to be guided by the categorical imperative. So back to the MCU. Captain America's deontology later clashes with the utilitarianism of Tony Stark's ideological offspring, Vision. In Infinity War, the Avengers have the option of killing Vision to preemptively stop a fascist tyrant from destroying half of all life. If he gets the storm, half the universe dies. For Vision, this is a very easy utilitarian calculation. Well, then we have to protect it. No, we have to destroy it. Killing an innocent, himself, is a moral sacrifice for the greater good. Thanos threatens half the universe. One life cannot stand in the way of defeating him. But it should. Captain America vetoes this immediately. We don't trade lives, Vision. This is the deontological take. Even if this sacrifice could serve the greater good, Captain America, moral compass of the Avengers, I am Groot! I am Steve Rogers. Says, no, we cannot murder the innocent. What if everybody murdered the innocent because they believed it served the greater good? I want to be clear that A, these theories do not have rigid boundaries you can view different problems through either lens. And B, neither is philosophically superior to the other. They are guides. Maybe you believe that the ends do justify the means. Like Tony Stark, you believe it's okay to break the rules in service of the greater good. You might be more utilitarian. Or maybe, like Steve Rogers, you believe doing the right thing is more important than the outcome. You might identify more with deontology. But maybe neither of these sounds right to you. Don't worry, the third theory is a wild card, completely different from the first two. Let's watch a short video to learn more. One to go. No, fuck. The third major ethical theory is virtue ethics. It focuses on personal virtues and good character. A virtue ethicist is not concerned with deontological rules or utilitarian consequences. She believes that those theories lose sight of the forest for the trees. They get so caught up in the details of right and wrong when we seem to just intrinsically know. It's wrong to kill, it's good to be kind, and you should only slap your lover and call them a dirty little slut if that's what they're into. Why all the complication? When I was a young, evangelical, born-again Baptist high schooler, I remember people in my church wearing WWJD bracelets, an abbreviation for Who would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Religious hoo-ha aside, this silly little bracelet is the perfect symbol of virtue ethics. It's a reminder to always be virtuous, to do what Jesus would do. No, not that. Definitely not that. Feed the hungry, help the poor, care for minorities, accept everybody, abolish money. There we go. What would comrade Jesus do? For the virtue ethicist, the moral compass is emulating these virtuous figures. When confronted with a tricky moral question, you simply ask, Is this what a virtuous person would do? You may not get everything right, but nine times out of ten, it's going to push you in the right direction. Would Comrade Jesus steal from his neighbor? Would he steal from a corporation? Would Comrade Jesus back the blue? Or would he protest police brutality with BLM? Would Comrade Jesus accept people with different lifestyles, sexual orientations, and religions? Accept one another. 
just as Christ has accepted you. A virtuous person always does the right thing because that's what a virtuous person does. She doesn't lie because lying isn't virtuous. She doesn't steal or abuse or kill because those aren't virtuous. Instead, she is kind, kinky, and communist because those are virtuous. The MCU, amazingly, offers us the platonic ideal virtue ethicist in the beefcake godly physique of Thor Odinson. Thor's magical hammer, Mjolnir, is enchanted so that only the purest, truly worthy heroes can lift it off the ground. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Thor is introduced to us as a fallen god. He is a vain, greedy, cruel boy! And so he is stripped of his hero status. You're unworthy! And he is unable to lift Mjolnir. Throughout his first movie, Thor regains his worthiness by spending time with the mortals of Earth. A crucial component of virtue ethics is gaining moral wisdom through life experiences. Ultimately, Thor finds redemption by sacrificing himself to save the Earthlings. Taking their lives will gain you nothing, so take mine. <laughs> Mjolnir returns to his hand, and he is the virtuous hero reborn. We see the other side of this arc in Avengers Endgame. At this point in the story, Thor has lost everything. His mother, his father, his hammer, his hair, his eye, his best friend, his brother. He fails to stop Thanos once. And then twice. What's wrong with him? He stops believing he is worthy. Oh, he's pissed. He thinks he failed, which of course he did, but you know, there's a lot of that going around, ain't there? For years, he sinks into depression. But Thor is recruited by the Avengers for their time heist, and his time traveling reunites him with my mother. She dies today. Their unexpected conversation reminds him what the true measure of heroism actually is. Everyone fails at who they're supposed to be Thor. The measure of a person, of a, a hero, is how well they succeed at being who they are. And for the first time in five years, he starts to believe in himself. Oh, wait. Summoning his hammer is his most triumphant moment, the confirmation of his virtue, the peak of Thor's arc. He is again reborn as the worthy hero. I'm still worthy. Let's recap. Utilitarians like Tony Stark always work for the greater good, the best consequences, regardless of rules or ethical boundaries. Deontologists, like Steve Rogers, always do what they know is right. Captain America is uncompromising in his moral resolve, and he is a truly good man. Virtue ethicists, like Thor, are primarily concerned with being worthy. Thor's hammer keeps him accountable, it guides him, and it even informs the audience that as he wields it, we know he is truly worthy. All three have unique strengths and weaknesses, but in general, they all arrive at the same conclusions about what is right and what is wrong. I want to reiterate that none of these three theories are superior. The MCU illustrates this beautifully. Specifically through the saga's literal moral compass, Mjolnir. One of the best scenes in the MCU is the Age of Ultron party scene where various Avengers Whatever, man, it's a trick. <laughs> well, please be my guest. Try to lift Thor's hammer. Come on. Really? Everybody tries. <gasps> All right, let's go. Ah! And nobody picks it up. <laughs> Nothing. Because you're all not worthy. <laughs> Except through this saga, precisely three people do lift Mjolnir, one for each ethical theory. Obviously Thor, the virtue ethicist, but Vision, the pure and moral utilitarian, also lifts Mjolnir. It's terribly well balanced. Well, if there's too much weight, you lose power on the swing. And of course, Steve Rogers, the deontological moral center of the whole crew. That is America's ass. 
The enchantment on Mjolnir recognizes any truly worthy hero, regardless of their ethics. Also, I really love how in the party scene, Steve is able to move Thor's hammer. Come on, Cap. But because he's so gosh darn moral, he pretends he cannot, so as not to steal his thunder. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> pun intended. It's a blink and you'll miss it moment. Then 10 movies later, it pays off in Endgame and the audience goes wild. I knew it. The point is that even in the MCU, no ethical theory is superior. You're not right or wrong for being a utilitarian, deontologist, or virtue ethicist. All ethical frameworks are capable of lifting Mjolnir because all three ethical theories are worthy. Most people view morality through one of these three lenses. And if you're familiar with these heroes, this may help you figure out which framework you like best. And whichever you prefer, understanding how these theories define morality allows us to see who or what is evil. Uh, I love dirty talk. I just swell when I hear evil described with such objectivity. As we begin this next video, I want you to remember that these were experts on good versus evil. So if you find yourself disagreeing with morality experts, your beliefs are not your own. For you see, entire industries are built on propaganda, hiding their evil with one hand, conjuring boogeymen with the other. The hatred of trans people, of immigrants, of the homeless, of women, it's all manufactured. The demonization of the other is, <laughs> it's the oldest trick in my book. Because I am evil. I'm very pleased to meet you. I hope you guess my name. What's puzzling you is the nature of my game, how deep my roots grow, my virtues flaunted without shame. Behold. Welcome to Philosophy, the talk show where intellectual titans debate who has the bigger intellectual penis. As always, I'm your host, CJ. Tonight's debate is quite simple. Which politicians are the most evil? Joining me today is intellectual titan and master debater, Shep Baniro. Ben Shapiro. That's what I said. Shapino believes the most evil politicians are the Democrats. The Democrats, and specifically the socialists. And on my right, intellectual titan and categorical degenerate, Chad Marks. Chad, it says here in my notes that you'll be arguing it's the Republicans who are evil. Nah, dude, it's the capitalist politicians who are evil. Both Republicans and Democrats. Fail the vibe check. That's great. What did you say your name was again? CJ. Uh-huh. Isn't there a conflict of interest having you score a debate on evil? Oh, <laughs> I'm just the moderator. As always, our debate will be scored with MB42, our resident morality AI, who can answer any moral question through all ethical lenses. He's never wrong. Assuming my gender is male reinforces the patriarchy. Let's get started with round one. Tell us, Chad, who is evil. I'm gonna start with an easy breezy freebie, the unapologetically evil George Santos. Not only did he lie about his family's involvement in the Holocaust and 9-11, capitalizing on global tragedies to further personal gain, but his most bogus transgression was setting up a GoFundMe for a disabled homeless veteran's dying service dog's treatment and then stealing all the money. Wow. Doesn't sound great. Let's see what MB has to say. George Santos stealing from a disabled homeless veteran's dying service dog. Rich grifter gets marginally richer. Disabled homeless veteran loses their most loyal family member. 
a service dog dies. What if everybody stole from disabled homeless veterans dying service dogs for profit? Would Comrade Jesus steal from a disabled homeless veterans dying service dog? George Santos. Evil. Well, it looks like George Santos is bona fide evil. Okay, Chapeno, who do you think is evil? I'm going to start with Nancy Pelosi. The thing that Nancy Pelosi is going to be remembered for is the fact that she has essentially tripled or quadrupled her net wealth while she was in Congress. She is now extraordinarily wealthy, like a lot more wealthy than she was when she entered Congress. There was a bill that was put up to ban members of the House from owning stock, stop conflicts of interest, and she refused. Let's ask MB42. Congresswoman making $150 million via insider trading. Rich white lady gets richer by cheating. Every other capitalist investor she is exploiting gets marginally poorer. What if everybody used unfair advantages to steal money from other people? Would Comrade Jesus engage in insider trading to become a centimillionaire? Nancy Pelosi. Two thirds evil. Nancy Pelosi is guilty. She's not killing the service dogs of disabled homeless veterans, but she is stealing money from other capitalists. That's bad but not fully evil. Nancy Pelosi sucks. But I have to say, we're capitalist. And that's just the way it is. But she's not the worst Democrat. I'm a consequentialist, so I'm most interested in canceling those who do the greatest harm to the greatest number of people. Like Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, seen here on his yacht, rich explaining to poor protesters why they don't deserve vision or dental care. In January of 2022, Manchin and every Every Republican senator voted to kill the child tax credits, which assisted 61 million children during the pandemic. When the CTC was vetoed, child poverty went up 40%. With just one vote, Joe Manchin and the Republicans put 3.7 million kids into poverty because capitalism says giving money to poor children creates an entitlement society. It does. The capitalist politicians have made poverty a policy choice. That's evil. MB42 is poverty evil? Rich politicians legislating innocent children into poverty. The rich get richer. 3.9 million children slide into poverty. <coughs> what if everybody chose profits over helping kids in poverty? <coughs> Would Comrade Jesus refuse to help the poor and destitute? <coughs> legislating poverty. Double evil. That's not evil. Of course you think that. You're against universal school lunches. School lunches are not going to solve the problem of child hunger on any serious level. If, if there is a problem with children actually starving, that is a child endangerment scenario to which CPS needs to be called. Truth is, it does not take that much money to feed a child. Truth is, it's not expensive to feed a child. Not expensive to feed a child. Not expensive to feed a child. Not <sighs> what? <gasps> I thought it was you. I can only hold that form for so long. I didn't know for sure. You're getting so good at tricking me. Oh my dad. Look who it is. I mean, don't, don't you think parents should, should always prioritize feeding their children first? If a child is hungry, that just means he has bad parents. <laughs> totally. Oh my. Just look at him. Red as the Soviet sickle, and I'm rock hard as the hammer. Uh, we don't do inner monologues on this show. This is not gonna be a fair debate if you're distracting the guest. Later, gamer. There are much bigger problems than school lunches. Ugh, I'm sorry. How did you go from that to this? Tried my wet ass bussy right up. If you have a wet ass P word, P word is female genitalia. My only real concern is that you get the medical care you require. <laughs> he doesn't know? He doesn't know. Can we get back to the children? It's the left that is evil with their woke ideology, drag queen story hour, and the trans indoctrination of our kids. Go on, Benny. How are wokeness, drag shows, and transgenderism evil? The radical left are very clearly after our children. Cartoons indoctrinate them into various sexual orientations and the moral relativity of human sexuality. This is sexualizing our young children. How is the radical left sexualizing children? There is no way to discuss gay pride without coming into conflict with the reality, which is that it is a sexual orientation, which implies sex, which implies you now have to discuss sex with small children. And they have TV people 
discussing sex with small children. Bro, I thought you were the facts and logic guy. You were falsely equivocating the discussion of sexual orientation with discussions of sexual acts. These are not connected. Telling kids that some families have two moms or two dads has absolutely nothing to do with sex. You're bringing the sex in because you can't think about married gay men without picturing two sweaty beefcakes pinning each other down to ram their engorged Evil. Cock. So evil. Are you saying gay sex is evil? <clears throat> they are worthy of death. These people should be put to death. Every single homosexual in our country should be charged with the crime. They should be lined up against the wall and shot in the back of the head. That's, right. That's what God teaches. That's what the Bible says. Um... The Bible says in Leviticus 28 that if a man lies with another man, they are abhorrent and they shall be put to death. My brother in Christ. The Bible also says in Leviticus that if any man insults his father or mother, he shall be put to death. If you gather wood on the Sabbath, you shall be stoned to death. God commands Moses to murder all the men, boys, and women of a rival tribe, sparing only the virgin women as conquest. Is that moral? Kill the males, then abduct and colonize all fertile females. The Bible is not a moral authority. We should ask the bot thing if gay sex is evil. MB42, is gay sex evil? What if everybody encouraged people to pursue whatever form of consensual love they desired, straight or queer? Sorry, gay sex is not evil. This bot was clearly programmed by radical left woke indoctrinators. Actually, it was programmed by Immanuel Kant, Bentham and Mill, and Jesus. This bot was not programmed by Jesus. Oh my God, you're Jesus? Yeah, but like, don't make a big deal out of it. Also, don't take my dad's name in vain. And you're okay with this trans stuff? There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. No, no. No, 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 Not no. only is Jesus okay with the trans community, your anti-trans rhetoric is evil. Hey, I'm just trying to protect innocent children from being trans. This is woke indoctrination of small children on sexual matters. No, I'm fucking disgusted by this black vitriol from politicians and all you fucksticks at the Daily Wire. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. I think it is an act of evil to teach small children that boys can be girls and girls can be boys. <laughs> it's an act of evil to say gay and trans people exist. These aren't just bad takes. This rhetoric is philosophically evil. You, Benjamin Praline Shapiro, are manufacturing hatred of the most marginalized group in our society with terrible consequences increased rates of violence, discrimination, and suicide, all to diminish a population that just wants to live their lives authentically and with dignity. But the trans agenda- The is trans agenda is surviving to average life expectancy. The trans agenda is- To live in a society where I can achieve the same level of sadness and dysfunction as everyone else. Manufacturing the hatred and vilification of transgenderism is evil. Take it away, MB. Spreading anti-trans rhetoric, the most marginalized group suffers increased hate crimes, discrimination, and suicide. Conservative pundits profit by appealing to, to the, the worst instincts, instincts of their base. Mm. What if everybody tried to shame and harass marginalized groups out of existence? Mm. Would Comrade Jesus try to eradicate a marginalized group of society? Mm. Spreading anti-trans rhetoric. Mega evil. Sorry, Benjamin. It looks like your anti-trans and anti-gay rhetoric is... Mega evil. Oh, fascism is immoral? That's weird. I think it's evil to have drag queens perform in front of children during story hours. Get it together, Ben. I think it's evil to have drag queens perform in front of children during story hours. Let's look at this another way. Aren't you infringing on that drag queen's free speech? They can continue to exercise their free speech, just not in front of a child. They can continue to exercise their free speech, just not in front of a child. Why? Because the government does have a responsibility to protect- I'm sorry? The government does have a responsibility uh -huh. in certain instances to protect What's the children. leading cause of death amongst children in this country? And I'm going to give you a hint. It's not drag show readings to children. Correct, yes. 
So what is it? I'm presuming you're gonna say it's firearms. No, I'm not gonna say it like it's an opinion. That's what it is. It's firearms. More than cancer, more than car accidents. And what you're telling me is- You don't mind infringing on the First Amendment, free speech, to protect children from this newest manufactured boogeyman, but when it comes to children that have died, you don't give a flying fuck to stop that, because that right, the Second Amendment, shall not be infringed under any circumstance. It is a fundamental right in the United States, enshrined in the Constitution, to be able to protect yourself with guns. There is a mass shooting in this country every single day. We're the only country in the world with more guns than people. The leading cause of death amongst children is gun violence. Yeah, but the Constitution the says- The leading cause of death amongst children is gun violence. The direct result of lax gun laws, which are a direct result of lobbying from the NRA. Every politician who accepts these bribes is complicit in the murder of every single child who dies in a school shooting. Sacrificing innocent children for money is fucking evil. Okay, this is getting a little tense. Ben Shapipi is saying drag queen story hour is evil and Grouchy Marx is saying politicians who fight against gun reform are evil. MB42? Drag Queen Story Hour. Children get a fun story, learn it's okay to dress in drag, and be flexible with the construct of gender. What if everybody was more accepting, and we encourage children to be true to their inner authentic selves? Would Comrade Jesus accept drag? Just look at him. Long hair, a dress, a beard. Drag Queen Story Hour. Based as fuck. Oh, it looks like Drag Queen Story Hour is better than not evil. It's actually based af. How about guns, MB? Politicians who kill gun reform. Mass shootings literally every single day. Firearms are leading cause of child death. The mentally unstable can buy weapons of mass destruction without background checks. <clears throat> what if all politicians were complicit in a culture that murders school children because of the large donations they got from lobbyists? <clears throat> Would Comrade Jesus be pro-gun? <laughs> Politicians who kill gun reform. Monster evil. Ooh, exciting. The gun lobby has scored highest on the evil scale so far. What's next? Drag queens and transsexuals are using cartoons to indoctrinate and sexualize our children. Drag queen groomers and the trans agenda are evil. Drag queens aren't trying to fuck your children, Ben. Catholic priests are. Ooh. They're your priests. Ugh. So embarrassing. Anyway, what's next on your list, Benjamin? Mask mandates and the COVID lockdown. <sighs> you mean like, as good things? No, they were evil. Big government infringing on our rights. You can't be serious. The right-wing response to COVID was to keep the economy going regardless of the cost to human life. Let's get back to work. Don't sacrifice the country. Don't do that. Don't ruin so this great American you're dream. So you're basically saying that this disease could take your life, but that's not the scariest thing to you. There's something that would be worse than dying. Yeah, absolutely evil. Textbook definition of choosing profits over people. How is this even a debate? MB42, was our capitalist COVID response evil? Capitalist-driven COVID denialism. The rich got way richer, and over one million Americans died. <clears throat> what if corporations always maximize profits regardless of the cost to normal people? Ha ha ha. Could you imagine? <clears throat> Would Comrade Jesus spread a plague to make a profit? Seriously? <clears throat> Capitalist-driven COVID denialism. Like, totally evil. The right-wing COVID response was, like, totally evil. You know what that means. Time for our final segment. So, boo boo, what is the most evil? Capitalism is good because capitalism is freedom. Socialism is bad because socialism is tyranny. So, socialism is the most evil? An economic system in which the means of production are owned and controlled by the community. An economic system where the workers control the means of production? That's not socialism. That's literally exactly socialism. No. Socialism is when the government You know he controls. invented socialism, right? Greater economic and social equality. Reduced wage and wealth gaps. Significantly improved work-life balance. What if every political system prioritized power to the people instead of the ruling class? 
Would Comrade Jesus claim that a rich man is more likely to pass through the eye of a needle than enter the kingdom of God? Socialism. Ethically tested. Jesus approved. Socialism is tyranny. Socialism is tyranny. Socialism is tyranny. Socialism. Is tyranny. Socialism. 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 <laughs> That Ozar needs some work. I mean, you've kind of nailed it. You've got five and a half million subscribers on YouTube. They just eat this shit up. Mm. Oh my dad, it's so funny seeing you here. It's been millennia, right? Yeah. How is your dad? Dead. This is a weird talk show. So Chad, who is the most evil? The most evil thing is... Say the line, Bart! Capitalism. Yeah! Capitalism is good because capitalism is freedom. What freedom? To exploit, pillage, commodify every aspect of our lives? 34 million people in the US suffer from food insecurity. 10% of the population. And we waste 300 million pounds of food every day. Nine pounds of food for every hungry person. There are 17 million vacant homes in the US and only 600,000 homeless. 28 empty units for every homeless person. We consider ourselves an advanced society, but we choose not to feed and house everybody, despite being clearly capable. We choose to murder Jordan Neely for being homeless and hungry, and the same ghouls who propagate the broken system that put Neely on the streets call his murderer a hero. You would normally consider that an act of heroism. They should be giving Daniel Penny the key to the city. Why is this happening? Capitalism. Because the wealthy legislate poverty with one hand, then buy up all the real estate with the other, profiting off the basic human right to shelter. Well, if you want passive income, real estate is the safest investment there is. There's a never ending supply of humans who feel entitled to a roof over their heads. Every evil we've talked about can be traced to capitalism Santos and Pelosi stealing money, the anti trans rhetoric, the gun lobbyists, the housing crisis. These evils exist because under capitalism, there is no bottom. We need to see unemployment rise. We need to see pain in the economy. There's been a systematic change where employees feel the employer is extremely lucky to have them. We need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. Every natural and human resource devoured in service to the god of profits. Transphobia drives engagement and distracts from the real evils. The housing crisis has exploded homelessness, and then demonizing them makes it easier to revoke social safety nets, in turn funding tax cuts for the wealthy. Politicians won't reform gun laws because they get millions of dollars to do nothing. Capitalism drives them all. MB42? An economic system based on private ownership of the means of production with the goal of maximizing profits, concentration of wealth, rising poverty, decreasing economic mobility, Profits emergence a society's sole motivator at the cost of our health and the planet. <laughs> what if every system of power prioritized self-interest, promoted the exploitation of others, normalized school shootings, and eroded our biosphere? <laughs> Would Comrade Jesus support the powerful exploiting, abusing, and killing the weak? <laughs> Capitalism. The root of all evil. And these are the lesser evils. The most evil outcome of capitalism is climate change. Scientists are saying there's a 90% chance human society collapses within decades. Earth is undergoing its sixth mass extinction event, a cataclysmic reset for the planet. We've killed two thirds of the Earth's wildlife in 50 years. How is this extinction event the fault of capitalism? Capitalism drives the pursuit of infinite growth on a finite planet, choosing short-term profits over long-term consequences every time. Thus, capitalism is causing more willful death and destruction than any other force on the planet, in the same category as the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Capitalism is a world-changing cataclysm. Capitalism first creates these problems. Profit motivates destruction. Whaling, deforestation, fracking, 
the oil and car industries, but even worse is how it sustains the destruction. 97% of climate scientists agree that humans are causing the climate catastrophe, but only 60% of Americans believe it. Guess why that other 40% doesn't? There is no climate crisis. Yeah, I don't believe it. No, no, I don't believe it. Do I believe in climate change? No. I, I think that that was just a way to extract dollars from Americans. The climate hysteria movement is not about science. If it were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than by politicians and a mentally ill Swedish child. Somebody needs to read poor Greta Genesis chapter 9 and tell her next time she worries about global warming, just look at a rainbow. That's God's promise that the polar ice caps aren't going to melt and flood the world again. Capitalism has created a system that incentivizes politicians and pundits to answer amplify transphobia, hoard real estate, demonize the homeless, ignore school shootings, and deny climate change. American existence is all about recognizing the external oppression and struggle of being a working class American and immediately shifting your attention away to like completely unrelated matters, oftentimes just like random marginalized communities. Because the TV man that is quite literally working at the behest of those oppressors is deliberately pointing your anger in that direction. What do you like to say? I like to say that the gays are psychopaths and we're not psychopaths. The gays, they are disgusting. I mean, talk about indoctrination. Look, no matter which ethical lens you prefer, actions that harm others to further personal gain are immoral. And yet, bad faith politicians on both sides regularly legislate harmful, self-serving actions. This is evil. But we choose the politicians. How do these ghouls get elected? How are people duped into voting for politicians that fight against their interests? How are they tricked into demonizing marginalized groups, trans kids, the poor, immigrants, instead of their true capitalist oppressors? Because their brains have been melted by the propaganda of Fox News, The Daily Wires, the Ben Shapiro's, all because of the capitalist-owned propaganda machines. We don't elect the evil politicians, propagandists elect them. And the pundits' radicalization of the right undermines democracy. Crazies like Marjorie Taylor Greene. People are not affecting climate change. You're gonna tell me that back in the ice age, how much taxes did people pay and how many changes do governments make to melt the ice? are elected because the population that voted for her has been brainwashed. This doofus isn't the root of the problem, she's the symptom. Hey, do you want to hear a joke? joke? The most evil people in our country are the pundits and the politicians who push the capitalist status quo. They have sold not just their souls, but the whole goddamn planet for a profit. Capitalist propagandists like Fox News and The Daily Wire indoctrinating their followers to follow extreme right-wing politicians. The sixth major extinction of life on planet Earth. <coughs> what if everybody tried to exploit and pillage and destroy the Earth for personal profit? <coughs> Would Comrade Jesus destroy the Earth? <coughs> right-wing capitalist propaganda. Come on, come on. Maximum evil achieved. Yes. Still got it. The indoctrinators like Benjamin Shapiro are more evil than the politicians because without their propaganda, we could fight climate change. We could enact gun reform. House the unhoused. We could protect the trans community. You wanna hear that joke? Shh. But since the most faithful voters have been brainwashed into voting for evil politicians against their best interests and show up en masse every election, we remain stuck in a broken system that drains the life force of its people and the planet. Hey, listen. Oh my God, listen to his joke so he'll shut up. You know why all the women love you? Cause you're hung like this. 
And remember, we always have to ask, why do the right-wing punditry do what they do? The economy, as you may have noticed under Joe Biden, it sucks. So if you can lock in prices on things right now, let me give you three good reasons to subscribe to Good Ranchers. First, well, Dylan Mulvaney doesn't seem like somebody who is much geared toward privacy. If you are a person who actually likes to keep your affairs private, perhaps you should take a look at ExpressVPN. It's an attempt to indoctrinate confusion into children. That's all it is. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, let's talk about the fact that you're about to have an amazing summer. The only pair of earbuds that you should be wearing our Raycon. Because there is enormous money to be made in doing it. Because there is one true evil interconnecting all the evils we have discussed. Capitalism. So there you have it. The undeniable blossoming of my evil. Injected into every nook and cranny. Hypnotizing the world with my apple on the screen. Okay, come here, okay. Right here. What do you want this? You want some you want some apple? You want some apple? Oh yes, oh yes. You like fruit? Are you like some kind of weird dog or something? Look around you. What do you see? Businessmen, lawyers, the working class, the very minds of the people you're trying to save. But until you do, these people are still a part of my system. These people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on my system, that they will fight to protect it. Can't you see I've already won? All the hatred I foment, all the influence I've sown, the complete normalization of the daily evils of our society. An entire political system, left and right, completely under my control. Evil prevails. And there's nothing you can do about it. Stay tuned for my next two videos describing exactly what you can do about it. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hold on. I said certified freak. Seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pull out game weak. Yeah, you effin' with some wet ass P word. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. Give me everything you got for this wet ass P word. Beat it up N word. Catch a charge. Extra large and extra hard. Put this P word right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top, I wanna ride. I do a kegel well, it's inside. Spit in my mouth, look in my eyes. This P word is wet, come take a dive. It continued uh, along these lines. Uh, and it gets significantly, significantly more vulgar. Like, a, a lot more vulgar. Talk your S word, bite your lip, ask for a call while you ride that D word. You really ain't never gonna F him for a thing. He already made his mind up before he came. Now get your boots and your coat for this wet ass P word. Pay my tuition just to kiss me on this wet ass P Right, so. <laughs> okay, pause it. <laughs> Yeah. I did naughty things. <laughs> <laughs>